Here we are, Troy. Yes. Under Godfrey's short portrait. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I can remember it's when that portrait 10 was years. What's painted. What's the date today? What's the date today? What is the date today? The 27th, I think. The 27th of June. Is okay. that right? 2012. And, and I think the actual date of his death was the 13th of July. So is this a practice? So this is this is the practice run. This is the for, practice run. Oh yeah, the really big event takes place on the 13th of July. And he, I, I really, I, I'm not getting used to this. Yes, well, I noticed that on Facebook you've actually got the holy relic there. This is, this is the Tanner Monocle. It's a horrible thing Does to wear. Does it come in a, in a little case? Or uh, like well, I don't know. His executor has it uh, in, a, in a little case, I think. It is okay. His place. Yes, but it's oh, a so horrible It's on loan. Thing. It's on loan. Oh, God. It's very much on loan. So, I'm sure it's not worth anything much, but it has <laughs> sent <a> sentimental value. <laughs> yeah, horrible thing to wear. I don't know how he did it. But it always used to raise a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Well, it was always good. Because he was a showman. He was. Yes. In fact, I feel like I could compete with Edward now for the you Dapper could. Gentleman title. Well, he was of, the original Dapper of, Gentleman. Of, he was. The, well, no. <laughs> now, Godfrey often looked like he was dressed by Oxfam. Let's yeah, be honest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on, on a major yes, occasion, yes, so. major occasions, he'd bring out the suit yeah. and look quite dapper. Well, that's right. But, he's very dapper. But no, during you know sort of the, the old cardigans and the old shorts. And, yes memorable event. It was one of our first encounters with Tanner and we've been recalling today a man, a man of tremendous charity, but he was also a man of great frankness, sometimes brutal frankness and this was this was very much in evidence on, on Autonomy Day 1991 when Matt and I accompanied him uh, to the various events around the universe. Anyway, at the end of the day, we went back, continued to drink in his office. You missed a bit about Jim Morrison? I don't remember that. No, no, no. A young man walked up to Godfrey and he said, do you remember Jim Morrison at the doors? And he said, oh, yes, dear, I knew him quite well. And the young man was as cool man, and he ran away. You know, he ran away. I, I had forgotten that. I yes. had forgotten that. Well, that was an important event, but there was an even more significant event. Yeah, no idea Jim Morrison I'll was. tell this story because, and Matt won't mind me saying this, because it's highly flattering to him. At the, at the end of the day, Godfrey said to Matthew, who at that stage had a rather magnificent moustache and long hair. I had heard that. He looked like King Charles I, I thought, but Godfrey had an even more exalted comparison. He said, my dear boy, you look like our Lord and Saviour. Now, as if I could top that, I then said to Godfrey, 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 who do I look like? Who do I look like? And he started to laugh and he said, oh, my dear boy, you look like an 18th century pisspot. <laughs> Self-esteem was around the ankles, where it's remained to this day. Terrible. NC. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. No way in the world can any one person tell the story of Godfrey Tanner. In fact, it's the big challenge for all of us. Somehow or other, we've got to go away from tonight thinking about how we can do justice to the memory and how can we get the record. As soon as you say Godfrey, you think of a, a man who encapsulated an idea of a university. And immediately you think of the contemporary environment and is the idea of a university surviving? Is it, is it driving? Is it as strong as you would like it to be? Certainly thinking of the spirit of the university ideal that he embodied, it makes you wonder how is that ideal going to survive in the present climate when commercialisation and corporatisation is playing such a huge part. And one could imagine Godfrey ranting and raving about the rise of corporatism and commercialism and getting extremely upset in this room, especially if he's had three or four glasses of red wine, to what he thinks of the Vice Chancellor. <laughs> you know, you've got to remember that I actually spent a, a lovely time in Florence with Godfrey and um, we were visiting, at that stage we both had an interest in the tombs in the underworld that, uh, that are there that tell a marvellous story about the history of the idea of punishment in the afterlife. So we visited the tombs, saw all the beautiful paintings and memorials of the dead and that night we were in the Florence restaurant and uh, as he did, as he did so well, after one, two, three, four, five glasses, my dear boy, there is no doubt, when I die, I will go to hell. <laughs> I will go to hell. 
and I, of course, in my innocence, naivety, say, God, what the hell are you talking about? My dear boy, don't bother going there. I will go to hell. And I said, Godfrey, oh, what an interesting thing. I wonder who you'll find in hell. He said, my dear boy, there will be many people from the corridors in the lower ground of the McMullen building. <laughs> <laughs> That's history, classics, philosophy. <laughs> and he said, but, uh, 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 I think probably um, one could summarise it as follows. One would expect to find uh, politicians, bishops, and vice chancellors. <laughs> That sums up his view of the world and he sums up his view of vice chancellors. I take it that the current vice chancellor is not here tonight, and that we're not being taped. We are, I we presume are. we are, dear God. So you can do that with the world of the, 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 the idea of the university and what, what, what Godfrey stood for. Uh, the student experience is very much in the headlines these days. This is what these guys are trying to do to create a student experience. He would never have thought of a student experience. He just said, we'll start the debating club. We'll start the rowing club. He surprised everybody by being patron of the rugby league club. Just president of the sports union, president of the Australian University Sports Association. That all of the students' functions and organisations, he was part of those in one way or another. He believed in the student experience and he tried his best to make it happen for all of us some of us who were part of that lived and learnt. He was a man of the world. The Greek word polites cosmos, the citizen of the world, drove that man. The difference was it wasn't an academic idea. It was a feeling for the world. He felt with the world. He felt when the world was in pain. He felt when the environmental issues were strong. He communicated his fear and he communicated his... his he could be so, so pessimistic. And you went into his room and if you said, good morning, <laughs> my dear boy, I am very sorry to tell you, and immediately you would get the whole thing of everything that had happened overnight, and you'd say, I'm oh, bloody sorry, I said good morning. <laughs> I'll never speak again. But that was how he lived the world and felt with the world. And then there was the beast. And everybody here who knew Godfrey and knew that in this great description where he had it of the beast. And there's lots of stories about that. So I'm not going to go into those now, other than to say I'm one who remembers some. Each one of us has got a memory. Each one of us has got a story. But after 10 years, it's time we stopped literally talking about them. And it's time we started celebrating the scholarship of the man because he was a tremendous scholar. He was the epitome of scholarship, his knowledge and his understanding of the world. Uh, he was a university man. He was a man who literally lived the student life. Uh, and he was a man who lived in the community. The rhetoric of community engagement that goes across the pages of university magazines now, he wouldn't have known the meaning of the word. But he lived in the community. He fought in the community. He worked, you know, on so many things to do with the community. The Hill Action Group. The Hill Resident Action Group. He did, when we were getting, uh, uh, when the harbour blasting was on, Godfrey blamed all of the things that were happening in the structures around the hill on the harbour blast. <laughs> the fight for homosexual reform. The fight against Vietnam. The Vietnam War. You can go through and say, see here with somebody who lived that life of questioning, challenging and being able to stand up. So enough of that. That's just simply saying we who know, knew and loved the man, we have a responsibility in some way or other to tell the story properly and we have a duty to somehow or other get something into the university culture that says through this particular activity. It could be the Godfrey Tanner Lecture. It could be, as Carol Duncan suggested from ABC, a bike ride, you know, where the requirements were that you have to ride in academic gear. <laughs> <laughs> or that we asked the rowing club, which he was so fond of, and we've got Mark here, that we, we, uh, you have to also wear that wonderful t-shirt, rowing. 
the ultimate orgasm. <laughs> Godfrey's own creation. So you could talk about that. Can you imagine the fundraising. I mean, what we do if we sold those T-shirts you know, in the adult shops? It's <laughs> a thought. It's a thought. I haven't been in one, but I'm pretty sure they buy a T-shirt set for rowing the album of August. Providing you spelled it wrongly. Um, so, so, and then, I have actually recovered Godfrey's bike. I'm actually going to have it repaired in such a way that it's rideable. And maybe we could put that up as a prize. Or maybe we could actually hang it in here. Wouldn't that be good with all the memorabilia that we've got of Godfrey? Johnny de Gravio, here, has got Godfrey's whole library in the cultural collections, complete with all those books that we all perused. At them. And there was one that was upside down when Godfrey was alive. It's still upside down. Can you go in there? So we come back to this. We have the memory, the story, the scholarship, etc. But the scholarship is the big thing for us because we need to make sure that we keep the scholarship alive, we look after these people, and that we were able to offer too. You know, it's based on the amount of money we've got in there and the interest. And you know how bad interest has been. A couple of years ago, we were able to offer three. But we've got to make sure we develop, build, increase the fund. Because one thing's for sure, the number of students facing challenging situations has increased tremendously compared with days when Judy first applied. You know, the, and it's a big one to, to understand why, why. But it's also wonderful to think so many people who go through so many challenges are actually determined to get to you.